two most commonly used distribution systems are the radial distribution and the ring main distribution. In this video, we are going to talk about these two systems in a very simple way. Now, in one of the previous video wherein we talked about the ring main unit, I asked you if you want me to make a dedicated video explaining the different distribution system and lot of you said yes. And that's why here is a dedicated video explaining the different distribution systems. Electricity reaches to us after the three stages. The first stage is of course the generation, then there will be a transmission and then there will be a distribution. As the name suggests in generation, the electricity is generated right after the generation. Then this electricity is transmitted over a long distance in the transmission phase. And then in the distribution phase, the electricity is finally distributed to its end user, right? So this distribution phase is what we call as the distribution system. And if I have to uh, define this distribution system in a very simple way. I would say it like uh, uh, distribution system is a system or a network which uh, connects the bulk incoming power to its end consumers, right? Very simple. So that is what is the distribution system. Now this distribution system is further subdivided into two parts, the primary distribution and the secondary distribution. Let us understand what is this. So the distribution system gets its input from the subtransmission network, which is at 145 kV or 72.5 kV. Now, what is before this that I'm not explaining for that. If you are interested in learning the complete single line diagram of power system, I have a dedicated video on that. I'll provide a link for that down in the description. You can go and check it out after this video. So the input is received from this subtransmission zone which is at 145 kV or 72.5 kV voltage level. Now please note 145 kV and 72.5 kV are the rated voltages, right? For this system, the normal system voltage would be 110 kV or 132 kV or for 72.5 kV it could be 66 kV, right? But it is always a good practice to refer a system with the rated voltage. 145 kV and 72.5 kV. So this is the input to our distribution system. Now from this substation, the uh, transmission will happen to a substation which will step, step it down that voltage to maybe 36 kV to 11 kV, 6.6 .6 or 3.3 kilo volts, right? Now this substation will step it down to this voltage levels and further this voltage will be distributed to a different substation, right? So this particular distribution is what we call as the primary distribution, right? We are stepping it down to 36, 11, 6.6 .6 or 3.3 kV. Now from this substation, if let's say there are industries who needs directly 11 kV supply into their premises, then those industries can be fed via this substation directly. So this industry is getting supply directly from the primary distribution. Clear? So 11 kV is stepped down here. It is given to the dis different consumers who needs 11 kV. And further, that voltage is delivered to another substation, which further steps it down to, let's say, 440 volt. So for example, if uh, this is 11 kV line and this pole mounted substation or pole mounted uh, transformer is stepping it down to 440 volt. And from there, the power is then getting distributed to different consumers like our home residential areas, shops uh, and other low voltage consumers. So that particular distribution is what we call as the secondary distribution. Right. Clear understood the what is the difference between primary and secondary primary distribution is majorly used to uh, give the supply to the high voltage consumers and then to distribute it to the secondary distribution and secondary distribution we are distributing it to different residential zones and the consumers who need low voltage power clear now this in this primary distribution so when we are delivering let's say 11 kv uh, power to this secondary distribution system there are different ways using which you can do this primary distribution there are two main methods which is most commonly used and those are 
the radial distribution and the ring main distribution so when we say radial or ring main you have to keep in mind that those are related to the primary distribution primary distribution system now let us talk about uh, radial and ring main distribution system one by one let us first start with the radial distribution so what you can see on your screen is one example of the radial distribution now what happens here is we have a substation let us say it's a 36 kv by 11 kv substation now you will notice that generally this 36 by 11 kv substation are uh, installed in an area where the load demand is around 5 mva right so the feeders coming out of this substation would be having a capacity to deliver 1 or 2 mva and hence you will see generally four to five feeders will be coming out of uh, this 36 kv by 11 kv substation if the load demand is more than 5 mva then of course you would need more substation or you can have a 72.5 kv by 11 kv substation in that case right so here for understanding let us say this is a 36 by 11 kv substation now here you can see there are different feeders coming out of this substation this is feeder one feeder two and feeder three now this is the main branch or the main feeder wherein we have taken several tappings which is what we call as the distributor and from this distributor the power is getting delivered via the service main to different consumers of electricity. So you notice there is one main feeder then there is sub feeders and then there are sub feeders here right. So this type of system is what we call as the radial distribution. Now important to note why it is known as radial distribution because if you see the there is one main feeder and from that the power is getting distributed the power is getting radiated or in simple language you can say the power is getting separated from the main feeder and hence the name is radial distribution because the power is getting radiated from its main feeder right you can also uh, call it as a tree distribution because just like a tree you can relate this uh, distribution system with a tree just like the main tree we have the main feeder the main stem of the tree then there are branches and then there are sub branches just like the tree and hence it is also known as the tree type distribution right so this type of distribution is the most simplest distribution available and it is also the cheapest option available but it suffers from the two major drawbacks the first and the most important drawback is let's say if something goes wrong with this feeder then all the load that you have connected on that particular feeder will be gone will be not having any sort of power so you have to go identify where has where is the fault has happened clear it the fault and then only the electricity will come back right so it has the poorest reliability in terms of power continuity right this is the first by the way if you are finding this video helpful why not to like the video and comment helpful so that i can understand this content is helping you the second major drawback is uh, let's say when the load on the feeder increases you may have to increase the length of the feeder and in that case what happens is the load that you have connected on the tail end of the feeder will experience a very low voltage because the uh, voltage drop is happening in between distributors so for example uh, for this load right here they would be getting let's say 230 volts which is the rated voltage but the load that we have connected at the tail end of the feeder will not get 230 volts they will have some regulation in the voltage some variation in the voltage right so that is also one of the major problem with with this type of radial distribution so let us here quickly summarize uh, the uh, advantages and disadvantages so advantages we what we saw it is the simplest method of the power distribution you have the main feeder then distributor and then service main and it is also the cheapest method available so all the methods that are available in the market this is one of the cheapest method but the drawbacks as we discussed it has the poorest reliability and there is a high voltage drop at the tail end of the feeder but that doesn't mean we do not use this type of system this type of system is preferred where the load requirement is not very high uh, in generally in the low density areas like villages so there you will see this type of distribution system is used most commonly 
right now some of this disadvantage we can uh, address uh, by doing one more variation in that the reliability disadvantage can be uh, addressed with the help of that and that is what we call as the parallel feeder so in this case what we are doing is there is main feeder along with that we also have one parallel feeder connected to it so both this feeder are capable of delivering the whole load on its own right so let's say if this particular feeder fails you can disconnect this feeder transfer all the load to this parallel feeder and then keep delivering the power the only time in which the power is lost is the time that you need to transfer the power from one feeder to another feeder transfer the load right so that is the only time which is lost uh, which for which the power will not be available but then it is not same as the radial feeder the advantage radial feed, feeder offered will not be offered by this parallel feeder and that is the investment that is the cost the cost of this would be higher compared to the original radial distribution that we just saw but this is also employed where uh, the supply continuity is important there this type of uh, method is used so all the disadvantages that we saw about the radial distribution can be addressed using the ring main distribution method now let us talk about that so what you can see on your screen is a ring main distribution so what we are doing here is we have same 36 by 11 kv substation now instead of taking one feeder what we are doing here is we have taken two feeders and connected in this fashion now when you look at this it looks like a ring it looks like a loop and hence it is called as ring main distribution or it is also known as the open loop distribution right now if you notice each load here can get the supply from either of these feeder right so for example load one is getting supply primarily from feeder one of course there will be switches here connected uh, to each branch so that you can open any particular feeder and uh, have power from the another feeder so um, load one is load a is getting power from feeder one in regular condition if this feeder fails what you can do is you can disconnect this feeder and then take the power from this feeder two right so in same fashion this load is also getting power from both the ends it can have and this also is having power from both the ends now let me give you a quick example now when you use a ring main distribution you need to have this type of device which we call it as ring main unit or rmu now i have already talked in detail about what is rmu i'll provide link for that video down in the description you can go and check it out after this video so in a regular situation uh, the load one would be getting power via this path so feeder one rmu one transformer and then load one now this switch would be opened in this case because we don't want power from feeder two as of now right now let's say this feeder one is gone there is some fault and the feeder one is uh, disconnected now what you can do is you can transfer the power uh, to feeder two uh, you close this switch so that the power will be delivered to rme one and then the transformer and then the load one so you see the reliability topic what we discussed is addressed here the reliability of power is highest when the ring main distribution system is used and the feeder one and feeder two both feeders are capable of carrying the complete load on their own now let us quickly summarize the advantage and disadvantage of uh, this system here so the advantage is that it is the most reliable for continuity of the supply so all the methods that are available this method is the most reliable method plus it gives the better voltage regulation we talked about the drawbacks in radial distribution the poor voltage regulation that topic is addressed in this particular distribution system the only drawback of this system is that it is very very expensive and requires very high maintenance in initially now uh, because you need you need a parallel feeders you need ring main units so definitely it is going to be expensive when you compare it with the simple and the cheapest method that is the radial distribution right clear understood the ring main distribution now there can be one variation here now i what i showed you is that both the feeders are coming from the single substation but you can also have sub, uh, two different feeders coming from substation one and substation two that is also 
possible that system can also be called as the interconnected system right clear understood now you may ask which system is better whether the radial distribution is better or the ring main distribution is better well i would say it depends upon the requirement let's say you have a very low dense area where the supply continuity is not of very high importance then if you use ring main distribution there then of course you will be wasting a lot of money so for that scenario the radial distribution is the best choice and still uh, today also the radial distribution is used very widely right on the second portion is that when there is a very dense area a populated city and uh, uh, the load requirement is also very high in that case the ring main distribution would be the perfect choice you cannot use a radial distribution in that case because you will save a lot of money initially but then later on you will be having frequent falls and then there is a lot of issues basically so in that situation the ring main distribution system is the perfect choice so which one is better well as i said it depends upon the requirement what is the requirement what is the application and accordingly the distribution systems choice is made right clear so that is all about the distribution system the two most commonly used distribution system i hope you found this video helpful if the video helped you then do like the video and comment helpful in the comment section so that i'll understand this type of content is helping you right so that is all for this video guys and if you can share this video with electrical engineers or the people who might be interested in knowing the different distribution system i would really appreciate that so thank you so much for watching i'll see you in my next one but till then keep watching keep learning